Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Stocking up to watch football this weekend. Stocking up late for the kids coming over for Halloween. Rouse has got your candy covered as well. Watching the Saints on Sunday? Rouse can help you out with that too. Lou Johnson covers the New Orleans Saints for the Advocate. Joins us every single Thursday on the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Luke, how we doing? Doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Derek Carr back at practice yesterday. What does that mean for the Saints? Well, I think it means he's on track to play, and I think that's a really good thing for the Saints. Um, but I, I still think there's reason to be optimistic about what Spencer Rattler, Jay Kanner can be uh, as a career progresses. But, like, this was – a bad situation they were dropped into, and they kind of played like it. Um, I was just looking up the numbers this morning. I mean, the Saints scored 15 points per game in the three games without Derek Carr. Um, if you like the like the advanced stats, I think the two of them combined for like negative 51 expected points added, which is really bad. Um, at Derek Carr, I think uh, in five games is like plus 14 this year. So I, I mean, that's a huge difference. And uh, and yeah, I think getting Carr back in the lineup, even if you're you're still without Eric McCoy and you're without Rashid Shahid, um, I think it only be good news for this offense and for this team. You got a lot of the offensive line back, um, still not really running the ball great last week. Um, do you think that Carr helps that? I think he does uh, to to a degree. Uh, I think it'll really help facing this. Uh, this Panthers defense, which I, I think is dead last in the NFL against the run, they're they're even worse than the Saints somehow. Um, so I, I mean, I would expect the run game to to look a little bit better this week. I think it even even last week it looked better. Um, you know, Alvin Kamara broke two 20 plus yard runs. Those are the first 20 plus yard runs he's had since the 2022 season. Um, and you know, I think that getting Carr back in the lineup will just kind of allow them to to be a little bit less of a one-dimensional offense um, and that, like have a legitimate threat, a legitimate passing threat back there and, and we'll allow them to open up some things. Now, I mean, like, look, you could go in there and they could absolutely struggle because they're a two and six football team. But I do think that just his addition to the lineup opens up a lot of stuff that they want to do. Who's catching passes outside of a lave and a skeleton cap? Uh, good question. Um, yeah, I really thought Marquez Valdez Scantling would be active last week. It was really a surprise to me that he wasn't, even though he'd only been with the team a couple of days. Like they, their receiver core is really limited. Um, you know, I still think that there's more there with Juwan Johnson. It's still like, you know, it, maybe he is, he just is what he is at this point. Um, but you know, he's when he's gotten the ball thrown his way more times than not, good things have happened. Um, so I, you know. I think there's still there's still an opportunity for this passing attack to be like a little bit above average, a little bit above league average, especially if they are getting the running game going with you know, Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara. Um, but they don't have anybody that scares you outside of Alave, and it's going to really hurt them when they face better defenses than the one they're going to face this weekend. When you look back at, at the game against. Um against the Chargers, like, the points didn't get away from the defense. Like, speaking in just purely points, you gave up 25, 26, which is not the end of the world, but the Chargers were one of the worst point-scoring offenses in the NFL. Was that still a bad defensive effort, even when you factor in the fact that the offense was never going to do anything? Um, no, you know, I, I thought they were they were pretty solid for a half. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that... Yeah, the struggles of the offense have kind of leaked into the defense a little bit. Um, but I, I did think it was a lot better than what they'd shown the, the couple of weeks preceding that, you know? Um, like, I think a, a vast majority of the, the Chargers' offensive yardage came on three plays, which is just, you know, that's part of that is just yeah, that's that's something the Saints have, have consistently struggled with is giving up the explosives. Um, you know, one of those, the 60-yard touchdown to McConkey, that, that was pretty good coverage by Alante Taylor. Like, those plays are going to happen. But then there was a you know forty yard pass to Josh Palmer where Kool-Aid McKinstry was playing the wrong coverage and there was a, another twenty five yard pass uh, to I think it was Jalen Rager um, where you know a guy just made a like a spectacular play down the sideline and those three plays led pretty much directly to 
um, I think it was 17 points. Um, and, and then you, you can count the Justin Herbert 40 yard scramble. Um, look, that's 170 yards on four plays. Um, yeah, that's, that's been the thing to me. I, I, like it was encouraging to see them play better run defense. It was encouraging to see them tackle better. Uh, but like, if they're going to continue giving up the explosives and all, all that kind of goes for naught. So uh, like, that's, that's the next thing they kind of need to dial back on. Uh, what's the, I mean, this is an obvious question, but I'll, I'll ask it anyway, cause you're there and I'm not, uh, what's the energy around the team with the players in Dennis Allen press conferences? Like, what's it like? They've lost six in a row. Well, I mean, they're trying their best to put on a, a happy face about it, um, but it, <laughs> it's, it's, I think, pretty obviously masking uh, what, what has been a, an incredibly disappointing season, especially after that two and zero start. Um, yeah, some of it is just is just uh, that, you know, like the injury stuff is is legitimately just kind of sap some of the energy out of the team because they don't have the guys. Um, yeah, just today, I mean, they had they had one active starting corner on their roster in practice. Um, so like, it's, it's really hard to like, believe that you're going to be good when you're missing a lot of guys. And then it's even harder when you're, when you're just losing a bunch of games. I mean, that's just human nature. Um, yeah, you go out there and you, you, you do all the things that you think you're supposed to do and you're, you're practicing well and there's energy in practice, and yada, yada, yada. But like, like if you go out there and you're losing four straight games by double digit points, uh, like, I, I don't, I don't see how you, you you can legitimately say, yeah, we're, we're doing okay. We're going to get it figured out. You know, they, they've got to start having results um, because like, you know, even if they're, they're just putting this, this nice kind of veneer on it, you can kind of see the turbulence under the, under the, the surface there. What if they don't win on Sunday? Look, I, I've been thinking a lot about that, man. Um, the Panthers are, are truly uh, the NFL's worst football team. Um, and I, I have a really, really hard time seeing a scenario where, where they can just keep this going if they lose to, to Carolina, even though it's on the road, it's a division opponent, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, I mean, just like, just take one look at like the NFL statistical rankings. Like they, they're like dead last in just about everything. Offense, defense, doesn't matter. Um, and they're missing like half their roster. Like they might actually be more injured than the saints are. And, um, Look, if they were to find a way to lose that game, I, I just don't know how you could justify uh, keeping things the way they, that they are. Like they, they clearly need to make major changes uh, because I, at that point, I mean, the season's lost. You're you're two and seven. You've lost seven straight. Um, uh, you know, there's no no amount of players you're going to get back from injury that's going to make that matter. As best you can tell, uh, do you expect to see Derek Carr a full go on Sunday, or do you think that he's still feeling a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, he'll be good enough to play. I, I don't know if like 100% is really necessarily accurate, um, but I still think that you know him at let's let's call it 85, 90% um, is better than what they've been putting out there the last couple of weeks. Um, so, yeah, he said yesterday that he feels he feels fine, he feels great. Um, yeah, we, we kind of heard that from him last year a little bit when. Uh, when yeah you know, he really struggled in those games after the injuries, so I, I mean I'm I'm just not anticipating he's going to go out there and, and light the world on fire. Um, I think he's still probably dealing with this a little bit, but they're in kind of a crisis point right now, and they need they need a little bit of something because they haven't gotten really anything out of the quarterback position the last three weeks. Yeah, that's uh, correct. You think they win on Sunday? Uh, I do. I thought they'd win last week, and I like I felt like an idiot after about ten minutes of gameplay. So, uh, but I. I just, uh, I know the Saints are two and six. I know it's been just really awful, but I, like the Panthers are, are, I mean, they are an absolute mess. I was looking this up today. They haven't had a winning season since before I started covering the NFL. 2017 was the last time they had a winning season. Like they are, they are really, really down in the dumps right now. If the Saints lose this game, I mean, I, I just, I, you know, like I said, I, I think there's got to be changes if that happens. Man, that would set up a home game with Atlanta, and that just would not be a very comfortable Superdome to be in. It may not be anyway, based on if, even if they win against Carolina, but if you lose to Carolina, that is going to be an ugly Superdome uh, in, in a week's time. So we'll see. Uh, enjoy Charlotte, and we'll talk next week. Thanks, Luke. Sounds good, man. Thanks. You bet. Uh, Luke Johnson covers the Saints. Follow him on Twitter at ByLukeJohnson. I was looking at just, just looking purely at the Saints' schedule. 
earlier today. And I went, okay. They beat the Panthers by 37. And then they beat the Cowboys by 25. And then they played the Eagles at home, and they lost by a field goal. And then they went to Atlanta, and they had a lead late, and they lost at the gun on a 50-something yarder. And then they went to the Chiefs on Monday Night Football, and although the Chiefs outgained the hell out of them, they were in that game in the third quarter. And that's the best team, well, the winningest team in the NFL. And that was your first five weeks. And then since then, there's been a bye. And, or there's been, I mean, a mini bye. They, they lost to Tampa by a billion. They lost to the Broncos by a billion. They lost to the Chargers by a billion, all with a backup quarterback. It's, it's such an interesting thing. And you could try to frame it one way or another, but ultimately you're going to come back to the same conclusion that, like, it's just not good enough. Too many injuries. Tough breaks and losing games at the gun, pin that back on coaching, salary. Like it's just there's too much bad for me to try to shoehorn the good back into it based on what could have happened the first five weeks of the season. Hey, it's on. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button, leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.